Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, webisode, whatever you want to call it, to the Sustainable Toastmasters Club through Coaching with District 95 Growth Team. My name is Shahrukh Hossein, and I am the manager PR for District 95. District 95 comprises of five countries in Toastmasters world, Denmark, Germany, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. So these are the five countries that we are responsible for. And we have a goal to grow the clubs, help them. And today we are doing a very special program about club coach, of how a club coach can help a co uh, club grow, develop. For that, we have Tim Spear, who is the district club growth director. And we have Cecilia who is the club coach lead responsible for all the club coaches. And uh, we will really, really appreciate that they're spending time with us and helping us learn about this program. So let's just dive in. First of all, welcome, Tim. How's it going? Well, there's a lot going on. I'm a club growth director now for three months. And there's, uh, yeah. A lot of experience already in these three months. Fantastic. It's amazing. Thank you, uh, Tim. Cecilia, how's it going? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for your question. Yeah, as said, Tim said, a lot of things going on. Of course, I as well as a club coach lead, so learning. And uh, for example, we have just had um, club coach meeting. It was interesting to meet the club coaches from another uh, different club. Fantastic. And I, I just realized that you just come off the club coach meeting as well. So it's not early right now that we're recording this. So if you want more information about Toastmasters, you can go to toastmasters.org. If you want to learn uh, about Toastmasters District 95, you can go to the website. So we'll just dive into this interview. And the first question I'd like to ask is uh, about what is a club coach program about? I'll give the word to Cecilia. The primary purpose of a club coach program is to help clubs that are facing challenges in terms of membership, meeting quality, or uh, overall effectiveness. So it is more to revitalize struggling clubs and guide them toward becoming vibrant and successful Toastmaster clubs. Wow. So basically helping clubs be, uh, who are, which are facing uh, challenges and uh, they can become vibrant and successful Toastmasters club. So, Tim, a well, question that pops in my mind is, what are the indicators of a successful Toastmasters club? Just the top three. You can easily recognize a successful Toastmasters club just by visiting their meetings. You see the meetings, uh -huh. are, as we had it already said, they are vibrant meetings. The people have fun. They are great speeches. They are effective evaluations. Um, you have a lot of people there and everyone is engaged and prepared and there's a lot of energy in the meeting. That Fantastic. So, Tim, what are the challenges that a club coach faces? Because you've been a club coach in the past and now you've had that experience as well. So what are the challenges that you see that uh, when you are a club coach, you go in and you will face? The main challenge at first when you get in contact with the, with the club is to have a good entrance, to establish a good communication with the club and figure out, okay, what are their challenges? What is the real issue here? And how can you get the people engaged, motivated and committed to yeah, check on these challenges and find a solution? Fantastic. 
So now the club coach program, what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, is basically established to help. Like the district mission is to help the club grow and become more energetic, vibrant, and more people learn about leadership and uh, public speaking and communication. The club uh, coaching program helps them become even better. But can you please tell us, Cecilia, what which club is eligible to have a club coach? Yeah, other clubs can have a club coach if they meet a, a following criteria, like have at least three, but not more than 12 members. And uh, have at least one club officer who has completed the club coach program training that you can find on Pathway and not suspended or closed and do not currently have two coaches appointed. When you say two coaches appointed, every club can have more than one coach? Indeed, uh, they can have two coaches, not just only one. Fantastic. That's really helpful. So, for instance, if somebody started a club or a club that was established, like COVID actually wiped out quite a few clubs. So they could have, if they had three members, a minimum of three members and uh, up to 12 members. Beyond 12 members, I think the clubs can actually then naturally grow or yes. can they hang on to the coach? Coach, please don't go. Please help me. Can they do that? No, no, no. Like, uh, for example, in, um, and one example that, uh, for two coaches, uh, to have two coaches, for example, there is one new club coach and uh, he, would, he or she would like to get support from an experienced club coach. So he has to have another one to support him on this road. And we like to remember that uh, the club coach is one power so to get a DTM. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a requirement to become a DTM. Mm -hmm. So every person who has DTM next to their name in the Toastmasters world has actually worked as a club coach at some point in their yes. Toastmasters career, so to speak. Wow, that's amazing. I'm learning a lot. I mean, yeah, I am take care of public relations. And uh, then people are normally ask me, how do you know so much? I have such amazing people like Cecilia and Tim tell, telling me all of this great stuff. So, Tim, what are the two challenges that a club coach can face? And uh, maybe you can share some example uh, from the time when you were a club coach. You are a club coach, right? I am currently a club coach and I was... Previously, uh, helping out at a different time where I was not becoming actually a club coach because the distance was too far, but I was supporting a club. And from my perspective and experience and also what I heard from others, the two main challenges are uh, resistance of the club board or the club members uh, to change something. Because they are comfortable with their club meetings, how they are run. Um, and they just don't want to realize that to get new members, to get more energy into the meetings again, they would have to change something, whatever this is in that club. And the second thing is um, maybe there's a lack of motivation that people are not actually willing to invest that much time and energy into the club to bring it up to a good level again. And these are the things you have to work on as a club coach to bring the people back to what do we really want as a club? What do we want as a, what kind of club meetings do we want to have and what is necessary to achieve this? Wow, that's amazing. I, it's, it's like when your organization is, I, I have two things on my mind right now. Mm -hmm. When an organization feels that they need to go to the next level, they normally hire a consultant which uh, who is someone who has an outside perspective, has the industry knowledge to actually kind of re reinforce the thought process that the leadership is having of how to improve things. So that's what I feel that the, one of the roles of the club coaches as a consultant, that there have been these cases and like this club was not doing well and now they're doing well because of these reasons. And 
I think, f- remove the barriers in the uh, club's board's minds. That's uh, very interesting. And similarly, when you're not well, you go to a doctor. Same reason, right? You're not feeling well. So the club, which is not feeling well, less than more, uh, less than 12 members. No, no sorry. Minimum of three members and not more than 12 members can actually apply. And there are more um, criteria which Cecilia has uh, can help you if you want to reach out to her. This is her email address. She's kind enough to share that. We've got to remember that these are voluntary positions. So it takes a little bit of time, but we're there to support each other to become better uh, at one of the best districts in Toastmaster world. So let's go to the next question. Anything you want to add before I go to the next question? Any one of you? Uh, I don't think to relate, as you said, like when you are sick, you go to the doctor or uh, for a company, you like they hire a consultant to help them. Because indeed, a club coach, they have some experiences already. So they can support um the club to grow or uh, to face their challenges. Fantastic. So what are the one requirements? Sorry. Yes, I please. have one small thing uh, to add concerning the point for the DTM. Actually, there's another way to earn that point for the DTM. You can become a club mentor, which is somewhat the role of a club coach for a just established club. Ah, that's so yeah. you can either be a club coach or a club mentor to um, that team. I've always team. wondered this uh, if you can just explain this because you have a very unique role in the trio because you're responsible for the growth. So, what does that mean? What are you responsible for as the club growth uh, director? You, it says club, but I think it's district growth director. Yeah, for the, <laughs> for the district, I have the role of club growth director. It means for one thing growing new clubs, so getting new clubs into our district, grow the number of clubs, and also growing the clubs itself, that they grow in membership, and especially support the struggling clubs, so they will get enough new members and you know, get into a healthy situation again. Wow, so just uh, out of curiosity, for people who don't know, how many clubs are there in District 95? We have currently 139 uh, well-paid clubs and we have a few clubs wow. currently struggling. So they are under the number of eight members. So they are we're working on wow. that. So that's where who, who can actually contact Cecilia uh, mm-hmm. and then she can help them figure things out. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Uh, that's a lot of work, Tim. I mean, I wish you all the best. I mean... I'm part of his team. <laughs> We're trying to get more members. And the idea is that you know, anyone from these uh, amazing countries uh, uh, who would like to uh, learn about public speaking, leadership skills, they can actually reach out to the our website, uh, which is toastmasters-95.org. Sorry, wrong ticker. <laughs> so they can reach out to us and they, if they want to start a club, they can reach to Tim uh, mm-hmm. or, or to me. We can help mm-hmm. them uh, provide the information and then they can start. And if you are a founder, mm-hmm. because this will help people become better at communication. This we will must actually... come on as a disclaimer. <laughs> yes, Tim. We will actually have a club charter workshop in three weeks on Sunday, the 22nd of October. Wow. Uh, so it's online, 22nd it's of October? Online. And from 10.30 to 11.30, we have some short presentations from people who chartered recently a club. And we will have experienced members there to ask questions. If you yeah, think about chartering a club or you are already in the process of chartering a club. Yes. Yeah, so in, in any of these places, Denmark, Germany, Iceland, Norway, and mm-hmm. Sweden, if you want to mm-hmm. start a new club, promote communication and leadership skills. This is the most cost-effective and amazing way to become part of a community working towards improving communication, relationships, and leadership. 
So let's get back into the interview. The next question is, what are the requirements to become a club coach, uh, Cecilia? Indeed, there are some criteria uh, requirements to become a club coach. So first of all, be a paid member in good standing. And there is also no, have not been a member of an eligible club in the past six months. Before, there is a possibility as a, m a member of a club to be a club coach, but it changed now. Have been a member of Toastmaster International for at least one year because you have to serve at least um, as a club coach, of, uh, as club officer for one annual term or two semi-annual terms and then have completed a minimum of level two in a path or an advanced communicator bronze or an advanced leader bronze. And the last but not the least, to complete the club coach program training module that we talked already before. The club coach uh, program, which is in the pathways, Indeed, it's on in the pathway. You have just like to check to, ta uh, to tape club coach program on Basecamp, and uh, you can uh, find it. Yes. So it's is it assigned by you or anybody can actually do it? Anyone would like to to take it, even you. You can go just on your on in your account and just uh, tape club coach program uh, training, and you can um, take it. Okay, great. It's um, not that much of an effort. It's not level one, two, three, four, five like the other pathways. It's okay, just one module good. and you get the very necessary information you need as a club coach. Yeah. Wow. And I think it really applies. Like in many things in Toastmasters, you can take this information that you learn here in uh, Toastmasters and apply in, re uh, in our daily lives. I wouldn't say real lives, but because this is actually practical life and practical skills that we learn at Toastmasters. That's fantastic. So, Tim, the next question is, it's a, it's a big one. It's about the word that a lot of people are afraid of. It's mm -hmm. about responsibilities. So what are the responsibilities of a club coach? Oh, there are many responsibilities, actually, but it also depends on the club and the situation, how many of them you actually have to take care of. So first of all, you have to conduct a club assessment to identify the areas of improvement. So what are the actual pain points currently in the club? Where has to be some time and energy and yeah, ideas and creativity invested to improve the situation? Then it's developing and implementing an action plan. So what can we do actually to improve on a situation and assisting the club officers in setting and achieving the goals. Actually, it's not your job as club coach to do all the work. Your job is to coach the club officers to become more effective officers or to find solutions for the problems they have currently. So it's actually providing mentorship and guidance to the club officers and to the club members. So of course, amazing. so if you want to dive in more deeply, you can find many more aspects of being a club coach and supporting the club. But if we name them all them, yeah, we will have a much longer video. Oh, that's uh, that's amazing. I'm having fun. I'm learning so much. So it's amazing uh, that uh, this is helping me understand the values that Toastmasters instill in its members to help be helpful towards others. It's not just I will become a leader and I will become a good speaker, but it's only way you can do it is to give. And club coach uh, is a good way of giving back to the community. And the fun thing is that you get so much back. You get so good results that you can see. My next question is to Cecilia. Uh, can you tell me the top three qualities of a good club coach? Yeah, for me, as you mentioned earlier before, it's a voluntary based. So there is really interesting like, willingness and commitment. 
commitment is really important for me because uh, as a co club coach, you should be willing and committed to working closely with a struggling club for an extended period to help them overcome their challenges. And uh, another one, as you are a club coach, coaching skills. So it means the ability to coach and mentor the club members. Those are crucial and you should be able to provide guidance and support to help them. And the last and not least is empathy and patience. Uh, those also important qualities for a club coach as they may need to work with with the clubs that are facing challenges or struggling to meet their objectives. That's fantastic. So they were amazing, like willingness and commitment. And when you say commitment, um, why is commitment important for a club coach? Uh, commitment is important because you have to meet uh, uh, regularly the club official. And also, you have to think to help them to achieve their goals. So it needs commitment because sometimes you are just, uh, no, I'm their club coach, but I don't know how to support them. Or sometimes also when we face challenges, we would like to give up. Mm. Yeah, I think commitment is extremely important. These are, I've just put it on the screen um, right now as well. And uh, uh, it's got a lot of ands in it, but you'll get the idea. Willingness and commitment, that was one of the, the two things because you have to have the willingness to commit as well. If you want to be a club coach and in any coaching, you need to have the commitment. You need to build commitment in others as well. When you're committed, people get motivated. Uh, I don't know about uh, you uh, or but people who are watching. Uh, I used to do running. I used to do uh, half marathons. So, but I learned... That if I'm running alone, it's kind of dragging yourself. You're pulling, pushing yourself. But if I have a partner, even if it was my young kids, if they were running faster, I would get some extra energy as if like I get a little extra uh, boost to run faster. So that's what a coach can actually do. And that comes through the coaching skills, the patience, empathy that Cecilia so rightfully pointed out. Thank you, Cecilia, for that explanation. Now, I'm going over to Tim now. Now, Tim, this is very important. What is the benefit? Because people will say, well, we'll manage. We can handle that. What is the benefit for a club to have a club coach? There are several yeah. benefits. For one thing, I have an echo. Is it also at your place? Yeah, it was, but now it's gone. So Okay, luckily. Okay. For, for one thing, you have guidance and support through the club coach. You have some information from an outside outsider who can tell you, okay, this is actually compared to other clubs um, well, or you can um, have a, a look at this or this um, uh, form, or um, there's a manual for everything at Toastmasters, and sometimes people in the clubs are not aware that actually uh, ideas for what they are looking for, they are actually somewhere in the descriptions of their roles, of a club meeting, of the, it's simply the, uh, the club mission. It's, it's amazing how many people don't know the club mission. And you get the objective perspective from outside that, uh, someone who is, has not been a member of the club for two or three years, or at least for one year, uh, can tell, okay, when I come into the club, I see uh, the door is not open and uh, there is no light in the floor. When I get in there, it's kind of scary. When, if I would be a, a new member, a guest, um, I would not feel comfortable coming in here. And people who are used to the situation might not even realize that there's a problem with that. Mm, also, very important. Um, the motivation, a uh, new person can bring back motivation in the club, in, especially in the challenging, in the challenged clubs. We have quite often people who are struggling now for quite some time, who have invested a lot of energy and um, see that they still have problems in the club. 
and a coach from outside can bring in new ideas to bring back the motivation to say, okay, there is some possibilities we have not reached out for yet. There are some ideas we can do and there's actually some ways where we can reduce the amount of time and energy for you to be more effective. And then we come to the point of club sustainability. We want to become the club vibrant, as we said in the beginning, full of yeah. energy, sustainable with a lot of new members that they are growing out of themselves and figure out, okay, what do we really want to achieve in this club, in our program, in being a Toastmaster for our life and for our future? That is a big responsibility. Just for those um, who would like to, who are wondering, Tim has actually sowed a seed in my mind. What is the club mission? So for them, club mission. We provide supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication, leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. I think mm -hmm. it ran out of space. So... <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. it's personal growth. It ran mm -hmm. out of space. I think there's a limit in uh, the text. Mm -hmm. the, the idea, the, 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 the mission that one has to understand is that when you're focused and towards your target, that's what a mission is, that this is what it is. So we want to provide a supportive, positive learning experience to learn communication, leadership skills. And I'll quote uh, the current president of Toastmasters International. There's so much more. Morag said this in, our, uh, in the speech she gave at the district officers training. And it is truly because you cannot explain it. People say, what is Toastmasters? I say, there's no way of telling it because it's experiential learning. Mm -hmm. You have to be part of it. And when you are a part of it, you will understand the deeper meanings through your eyes. Normally, you see words and you see their meanings in, uh, in, in, in dictionaries and in books. But here you will see them through people exemplifying them through their own display of uh, the actions that are, they are taking. And it is fantastic. Thank you to the both of you. We had a lot of uh, good points discussed today. Uh, before we go, I would like to point out that this is a series that we're doing. It's Sustainable Toastmasters Club through coaching with District 95 growth team. So if you want to be part of it, uh, where you want to share your own examples, you want to become a coach, you can reach out to Cecilia. Her email address is here. So you can write to her and she'll help you with that. If you want to start a new club, the, the, on 22nd of October, 2023, we have a club chartering workshop. Can you, Tim, repeat the timings that you were mentioning? Um, it's supposed to start at 10.30 and go until 11.30. But if there will be more questions, I think some people will stay longer and make sure that all your questions are answered. Yeah, uh, in, in my PR workshops, I normally say this, and I think I made a mistake myself. <gasps> I normally say, why don't you write a day with the date, you know? So it's a Sunday, so 10.30 mm -hmm. in the morning. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, Toastmasters are not normal people, so they're special, and uh, they're the crazy ones. Uh, so they will wake up at 10.30, and they will be there to learn how to charter a workshop, uh, how to charter a new club. And uh, this workshop will be from 10.30 to 11.30 on 22nd October. Please do attend if you have this intention of promoting communication, leadership. And uh, I'll quote her again. There's so much more. There's so much more. And um, thank you for staying with us uh, for the whole half an hour that we were here. And the point is that we want to support our district with... Our, our district mission, which is to support the clubs in growth, sustainability. And uh, we're really excited about that uh, everything that we're doing in the district, and we could not do it without you. So keep liking, supporting, 
commenting on the video below, on the, uh, on the sections below, on LinkedIn, Facebook, and wherever you see this video. So thank you very much. Goodbye, and we'll see you in the next webisode webinar. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.